very old Stuart S50 steam plant, part 27, piping the chimney condenser and testing it to see if it works. Estimating the length of the pipe is slightly difficult and I have to pre-bend it before I can feed it in through the hole in the casing to exit out of the side as you see here. And once the correct length of pipe was found, I silver soldered a couple of unions, one on each end, and now I'm feeding it in through the hole to stick out of the side. I tried this a few times before I got it in the right position. The heat shield around the burner gets in the way, but eventually everything sort of fell into place. And as you can see from this clip, the drain pipe is facing backwards, so everything's in the right position. After a few minute final adjustments to the angle of the pipe, everything's okay. And this clip shows me fitting a double union centre to the pipe, with a spanner at one end and a socket at the other. You can see more clearly what I'm doing when I remove the spanner and the socket. Now I need to make a small union adapter to go from 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch for the end of the pipe to a quarter by 40 thread to screw into the PM Research elbow. The exhaust piping is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and the general idea is the larger the exhaust pipe the better. Once the steam's done its work you want it out of the way with a minimum of back pressure. As you've just seen, I'm using a tailstock die holder to cut a 5 16 by 32 thread on this end. In the last episode, I temporarily lost my parting tool, but I found it again. It didn't go to the new workshop, and here it is, in action, parting off the work. I can let it fall into the chip tray because I've cleaned it out. Now I need to cut a thread on the other end, which will be quarter by 40 threads per inch. So I'm screwing the 5 16 part of the work into a nut and holding the nut in the chuck. For a threading operation on the other end of the work, it's no good holding it by the thread that I've just cut because it would just rotate and damage the thread. Also, if I hold it by the hexagon part, that will get marked by the chuck jaws. Over the years, I've turned so many pieces of bar down to quarter of an inch in diameter, I can almost do it blindfold. But I will insert a health and safety warning, it's not a good idea to use a lathe when using a blindfold at the same time. No self-respecting union adapter would be any good without a hole down the middle, so here I'm putting first of all a centre mark in it, then I'm using a twist drill to make a hole down the middle. When drilling holes in fittings like this, it's important to select the correct diameter twist drill. If it's too big, the fitting will be weak. If it's too small, it will restrict the flow of the steam. After applying a small amount of Loctite 542 to seal the threads, I screw the union into the elbow. And here's the finished effect with the pipe fitted. I try and think out the piping before I do it, so it's not just a random collection. And here's a shot showing the piping runs, and I think it looks quite tidy. Time to light the burner and test the boiler. For two reasons, I want to see if the paint burns off again. And I want to see if my chimney condenser works. In no time at all, there's a tiny amount of pressure. With a quick flick of the flywheel, the engine starts with no problems at all except for the pipe that I've put in the condenser is too long. The water's coming out of the pipe and splashing on the baseboard. When I was making this pipe, I thought, well, I think it's a bit too long, and sure enough it is. So we'll shorten the pipe very shortly. The good news is, the paint isn't bubbling much this time, it's getting very stable, and these really do look like bricks, I'm quite pleased with this effect. Yesterday, when I made this video, before I made it, I went up to Blackgate's Engineering and bought some heat-resistant material, which I'm going to fit inside the boiler at this side. The chimney condenser is successful. Here's the condensate that's come out of the drain pipe. I left the boiler to cool for a little while, and then I started to remove the piping. All of this piping needs to go in the acid bath. The acid will clean off the oxidisation, both on the inside and outside of the pipes. Some of the pipes are going to be polished, and others are going to be clad in string. So this will all be part of the operation. The exhaust pipe, for instance, will be polished, but the steam inlet pipes will be clad in string because they get very hot. This clip shows the removal of the chimney condenser and the pipe, and as you can see, it's far too long. It's nearly right at the top of the chimney. I'm just going to chop it in half and that should be okay. I'm marking the pipe with a felt tip pen because it's easy and it just shows me where to cut it. I often use felt tip pens for marking pipes, I just find them convenient. 
Maybe not as accurate as a scriber, but this is not a precision item. I don't need to put this pipe into the acid bath. I've cleaned up the end and it's nice and shiny. That's the part that shows. The rest of it is inside the boiler. But the other pipes are all bundled together and they're now being placed in the acid. When I get into my new workshop, I'm going to put some stronger acid in this because it's taking far too long to dissolve the bones. And on that note, I'd like to say thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.